Sports. The road trip was six days of agony, close games, heartbreaking finishes. So it's back to Miami, back to the sun, where the fish opened with a bang. It's three with Washington, then three with Seattle, as the Marlins try to find their groove again. Marlins, and that's good news. Dropping all six on the road trip. The losing streak is stretched to seven games. And it's the Nationals, whom the Marlins just saw, that are in town. Christian Yelich is hot right now. Garrett Jones trying to keep his group going after a home run. And Ryan and Jordan Zimmerman gets the start. Brad Hand going for the Marlins. First of a three-game series here, Nationals and Marlins. Rich Waltz along with Tommy Hutton. It's a seven-game losing streak. And from the point of that losing streak, which started against the Padres in this building, Tommy, the highlights have been big home runs that have hurt the Marlins late in ball games. Yeah, I might go the other way and say the lowlights have been the uh, Amarista and Harper three-run homers, the grand slams by uh, Worth and by Desmond, the big home runs by Rollins and Utley. Uh, keep the ball in the ballpark. I think the Marlins are going to have a good home stand. Or you saw that jet plane flying by on the screen. Getting the Marlins back here. The Marlins decidedly different in this building as opposed to on the road. And, and here's the the proof. Well, the whole key, look at the difference in the pitching. The, the ERA on the road on this past road trip over six, just about two and a half at home. They were scoring more runs. The whole key, and I think they did it against Zimmerman in Washington, D.C., was to have nice aggressive at bats. They knocked Zimmerman out in the second inning in D.C. And the first two games of this series are pitching rematches from that series and in this one you got that rematch. Brad Hand gets the baseball for Miami. You know Brad Hand actually for the first three innings threw the ball very well. He got hurt by a Bryce Harper three run homer trying to pick up his first ever win against the Nationals in six games four starts he's 0 2. So he'd like to continue what he did those first three innings keep the hitters off balance use that change up use that breaking ball and that was the Harper homer that hurt him now. To continue our Chevron pitching matchups, Jordan Zimmerman's not used to exiting in the second inning. He's been one of the best pitchers in baseball the last couple of years. And he has been against the Marlins, too, Rich. Four and three in his career. That was the shortest outing of his career. Uh, remember in that game, the big hit against him, a, a shot by Derek Dietrich, who is back in the lineup tonight. Dietrich is in. Christian Yelich is in. And on. And hot. Jeff Kodai, Craig Minervini, discuss as the Marlins get set to take on the Nationals.
Marlins and Nationals tonight. Let's head out to center field. Craig Minervini, Jeff Conai, gents. Thank you very much, Rich, and good evening again, everybody. Marlins and Nationals getting going here. A lot of these matchups this year, 19 of them. Marlins lost the first three to the Nats last week. Uh, good to see on the road trip, though. It was a rough one for the Marlins. Christian Yelich, you saw some of the good approach at home pay off in some good numbers on the road. Yeah, early on, uh, obviously had some tough lefties that he faced with Colorado and San Diego. But you watch this guy and the way he works at the, uh, the plate, uh, the way he's been so patient. He leads the American League, or I'm sorry, the National League in pitches seen per at bat right now. And that's just sticking with his plan. Uh, this guy's got a great ba uh, baseball acumen, uh, very high baseball IQ, I like to call it. And he's got a plan every time he goes up to the plate. So when you've got a young player that has that plan, he's not going to stay in, in slumps very long. There's the numbers during the eight game hit streak, a 343 average during this hit streak, three steals as well. And here's another stat. Interestingly, the same 343. That's his average against right handed pitching. As Diner mentioned, a lot of lefties early on, two for 14 against lefties, but he's really eating up right handed pitching, favorable matchups, and he'll get one of those if you call Zimmerman favorable here in the game tonight. And you know what? I think that uh, eventually Christian Yelich is going to be a good left handed hitting left-handed pitcher matchup type guy yeah. he's going to get uh, more experience because Redmond's going to throw him out there against lefties as well and he's going to be a, I think he's going to be close to even all right we'll see if he can get the Marlins going here as he'll be leading off for the Marlins against Jordan Zimmerman in the bottom of the first but first we've got the Nationals up Brad Hand the lefty facing Jordan Zimmerman in the matchup we'll see you on the post game show as well enjoy the game on Fox Sports Florida Toyota, let's go places by AT&T U-verse TV. Check availability, 1-800-PICK-AT&T. Rethink possible. By Checkers, visit your local Checkers for the $2 shrimp and fries box. And by your South Florida Honda dealers and sfhondadealers.com. In Miami tonight, Brad Hands, 24-year-old lefty out of Chaska, Minnesota. Takes the mound and he'll face this Nationals order. Of course, the Nationals without a couple of big names. They still have Anthony Rendon, who was dynamite against the fish. Look what he did in that series. Five for 11, two doubles, a triple. Kevin Franzen's been hot. He swung it well in Atlanta. Jason Worth clobbered the Marlins as well. Bryce Harper's hot all of a sudden. Ian Desmond at short. Tyler Moore gets to start at first. Danny Espinosa hitting much better than last year. Sandy Leon is the catcher Jordan Zimmerman is in the nine spot and here is Brad Hand. 
You know, Rich, you look back at that outing that Brad had had in D.C. And really, the first three innings, he threw extremely well. He gave up one base hit. He had three strikeouts. Had a couple walks. But he got hurt in that fourth inning and uh, got hurt with a big home run. It was a, a pitch that somehow Bryce Harper was able to keep fair and hit a long shot in that uh, third deck at National Park. So Brad Hand trying to stay away from giving up the long ball. There's a look at the defense tonight. Reed Johnson with the start, so he's in left field. That moves Yelich over to center field. Stand in right. McGee and Echeverria around the infield on the left side. Derek Dietrich back in the lineup. Missed a couple of games in Philadelphia with some back stiffness. Garrett Jones, a home run in Philly. He's uh, ready to go. And Jared Salta Lamacchia behind the plate. Pitch of Penny brings you the first pitch. Brad Hand getting set to face Anthony Rendon, Kevin Franzen, and Jason Wood. And Hand throws a fastball for a strike. We are underway in Miami. Marlins and Nationals tonight. Nationals trying to wipe away the sting of getting swept by the Braves and the Marlins trying to wipe away the, the taste of a bitter six game road trip, which they lost a lot of games late on big home runs. Anthony Rendon, terrific young talent, really good hitter, and he lost one to right. Giancarlo Stanton is back and he's there, and he makes the catch. You saw Reed Johnson in left field. The reason Johnson is there. Remember yesterday, Marcelo Zuna fouled the pitch off his foot. He left the ballpark in Philly in a walking boot and crutches. But today, he looked fine. They wrapped the foot. He took batting practice, and he had a great batting practice. He's ready as a pinch hitter. I know you and I were a little concerned when we saw him get off the team bus and get up on the plane. He actually had crutches yesterday, but told us today uh, he could play, and certainly he'll be available for Mike Redmond. Kevin Franzen, always a guy on the periphery in San Francisco as a utility guy, known for a good bat. And the Nationals added him as a utility guy. He's playing a lot, and he's hitting quite well. Echeverria stumbles. Quick release. Wow, what a throw. I thought there was no way he'd get him because he stumbled, and Franzen got up the line, but Etch's throw with some help from Jones in time. Keep in mind, Kevin Franzen can run a little bit too. There's the stumble, but he was able to maintain balance and then got a nice pick by Garrett Jones over at first base. Just an outstanding play by Adani Echevarria. So the Marlins make a nice play, and that means they get to face Jason Worth with nobody on, which is good news for the fish because Worth certainly clobbered Miami when the Marlins were in D.C. He hit that dramatic grand slam when the Marlins walked the bases loaded to face him off of Carlos Marmol and then the following day against Tom Kohler a two run shot worth following up his best year as a national and one of the best years he's had in the big leagues a career high last year on base plus slugging of 931. Always a very selective hitter. You see that 85. That's the changeup that Brad Hand uses. Breaking ball pulled foul. And remember that last start, you and I were talking about a pitch that kind of looked like a cutter. We weren't sure exactly what it was. Brad told us it's basically his changeup. Sometimes it has a, a cutter like action to it. Sometimes it fades away to a right handed hitter. Has always had that great curveball. That was the one of the things when the Marlins drafted him that they liked about him. He's added the changeup, and as Chuck Hernandez told us, going into spring training and coming into this season, he's learning to use that changeup more. Especially against right handed hitters which will just make him a complete pitcher because you see the fastball. He's not a soft tosser his fastball 94. Worth clobbers one left center field deep. And off the top of the wall Johnson has it. How in the world did that stay in the ballpark. Worth can't believe it. That looked like it hit the very edge. Of the top of the wall above. The out of town scoreboard. 
in, in Jason Worth's mind right now, he's going through all the ballparks in the league <laughs> that this is a home run. It hit on that green padding. Up in this area is the padding. And that's where it hits. It doesn't even hit the scoreboard. It's above on that green padding. And then softly comes back into left field. Now Matt he's still staring now out. Now Matt there. Williams, the uh, skipper of the Nationals, is out to talk to Joe West, and he cannot. This is not a play that he can challenge. Well, the padding is part of the fence. Right. But uh, remember, just like in the old days. A manager could come out and suggest a home run replay. Now the umpires will get together, and if there's any doubt out there between the umpires, they got a couple of veterans in Joe West and Rob Drake. Marty Foster's been around. Joe Joe West checking with uh, Rob Drake. He's the third base umpire. So from from our vantage point, from the replay, you can clearly see. That yeah. it hits that padding, but uh, evidently uh, Joe West just wants to make sure. And this procedurally is the same, except in the old days, and that was up until last year, the video was fed back to the umpires at the ballpark site here. So this won't be a challenge lost by Matt Williams because this is just the umpires trying to make the correct call on a home run. Right. And now the umpiring crews that are in New York, there are two crews in the command center in New York. They'll look at the video and they'll tell Joe West, hey, it hit the top of the fence. And away you go. And I actually think Jason Worth knows that too. Well, there isn't much behind that where it could bounce back into the ballpark. If you've been in this ballpark, you know that there's there's nothing behind that fence. There's Jeff Conine's stairway to heaven, but that's a, about 10, 15 feet behind the fence. See, to be quite honest, I'm surprised it's taking this long uh, to determine. It's a double. And here comes Bryce Harper. Pick your poison right now with the Nationals. The Marlins saw Rendon and Worth wreck him. Harper was just getting hot, and he had a, a really good series in Atlanta despite the Nationals losing three games. Call on the field was confirmed, is the word back from New York. Harper yeah. shortens the butt, takes ball one. Remember, we saw Harper hit in the number two spot then he was struggling so badly he went down to the number seven spot and tonight Matt Williams had, has him hitting cleanup. I also distinctly remember the first game of the series in D.C. There was chatter around baseball that what's wrong with Bryce Harper he's really struggling and I think you and I both said don't worry. He's fine. He's going to be fine. And a week later, he's well over 300 and crushing it. There's a breaking ball from hand. Yeah, that's a nice curveball. Nice curveball. That really equalizes everything, especially to a left-handed hitter. Well, the Nationals are down a couple of pieces, a key piece in the middle of the order. Ryan Zimmerman out four to six weeks. And their leadoff guy, Denard Spann, is out with a concussion. Harper hammers it in the gap right center field boy stay hot and Harper's got speed to burn races around second out from under his helmet and he's got himself a triple same old Nationals this is just what the Marlins saw four days ago in D.C. Well you have Harper who's hot he's even playing center field now with span out but Boy, that fastball stayed up in the zone, and you miss with a pitch like that to a hot hitter. Generally, you're going to pay. And how many times, Rich, have we seen a ball in that right center field area with a runner with a little bit of speed? He's going to get to third base easily every time. Now, Ian Desmond. 
he had a hand in that sweep in D.C. The Sarasota product with a grand slam in the third game of the series. Saltalavakia has to block it, and the count is 1 1. Hand got to the big leagues just a year, actually, a couple of years after he arrived in the Marlins organization. Remember, they brought him up in 2011 as a 21 year old, fouled at the plate. He's 2 and 10. With an ERA in the low fours, and this is career start number 17. You know, he's had some some really interesting starts in his young career. He's had some poor starts, and he's he's had some very good starts, but he hasn't found that consistency yet. 126 starts in the minor leagues. The one-two pitch, and the count two balls. And two strikes rematch tomorrow night from the series in D.C. And that's Steven Strasburg for the Nationals, Tom Kohler for Miami. That was a well pitched game that got out of hand late against the Marlins bullpen. Desmond, the guy that did it, with a grand slam off of Archimedes Caminero. That is outside corner, and down goes Desmond. But the Nationals make their presence known here in Miami. A worth double, a Harper triple, and a one nothing lead. And two of them just took a bite out of the fish with the worth double and the triple by Harpa. Here we go. Marlins lineup. Christian Yelich in the leadoff spot. Derek Dietrich's back in. He homered against Jordan Zimmerman last time out. Giancarlo Stanton, Garrett Jones, Casey McGee, four for his last nine. Jared Saltalamacchia, Reed Johnson getting the start in place of an injured Marcelo Zuna. And Danny Echeverria hits eighth, and Brad Hand is in the nine spot. Yeah, Jordan Zimmerman, that uh, last outing, the shortest and worst of his career. Not one to make excuses. He'd been uh, coming off a little bit of a flu bug, but he didn't use that as an excuse. Tonight, making his 100th start since Tommy John surgery. Zimmerman's shortest major league start against the Marlins his last time out. And Yelich takes a strike. One of the things that the Marlin hitters did really well in that game, Zimmerman throws strikes. He's around the plate, and they were very aggressive with their at bats. One and two. Yelich, Dietrich, and Stanton here in the first. One nothing. Washington 
on top. Zimmerman is a guy who's kind of an it's tough to say a guy that had such a great year last year he won 19 games he is overlooked but he's overshadowed on this uh, pitching staff you've got Steven Strasburg who stole headlines and still does Gio Gonzalez a, a two time all star plus you have another Zimmerman on the team he's, he's not even the most uh, famous Zimmerman is he but he may be their best starting pitcher you look back to the year he had last year the ERA in the low threes, 19 and 9. He was an All Star last year. In 2012 and 32 starts, his ERA was under three. Very workmanlike, not real flashy. Auburndale, Wisconsin. And Yelich goes around. Joe West said he went. And when Joe West says you go, you go. A couple of little changes in the defense for the Nationals in this one with some guys out of the lineup on the disabled list. But Franson starts in left field. Harper moves over to center, worth it right. Rendon is the third baseman for now. Desmond in short. Danny Espinosa at second. Moore's at first, uh, giving just giving uh, Adam LaRoche a night off. Sandy Leon is behind the plate. Here's Dietrich, and Derek takes out. Dietrich, a productive road trip. A couple of home runs and also back spasms. Now, one that, of those home runs off Jordan Zimmerman. Not that the home runs had anything to do with the back spasms, but Mike Redman was proactive when he heard that Dietrich's back was stiff, and rather than have him end up on the disabled list, he gave him a couple of games off. Former Georgia Tech shortstop fouls it off. And speaking of uh, a second baseman, we're talking about Derek Dietrich. Rafael Fracal makes uh, his first appearance in a game. He'll be playing for Jupiter tonight. I think they're in Port St. Lucie. So he'll be on a rehab assignment, getting some game action. Dietrich, a chopper out towards second. That's Espinosa. He's a very good defender, though the Nationals are dead last in the National League in fielding starting the day. Yeah, it's interesting. You look at the uh, fielding numbers. I talked about it on Marlins Live. You've got the, the Nationals, you've got the Phillies, and you've got the Marlins, who are the bottom three teams defensively. Doesn't sit well with Matt Williams, a uh, multi gold glove winner. He won four of them as a player. Here's Giancarlo Stanton now. Stan goes after a fastball, hammers it left field. It's deep, and it is off the wall. Stan around first, thought he had hit it out, and ends up at second base, no problem. Stan around first hesitated. That ball kind of disappeared into the scoreboard, landing probably three feet lower than worse ball. Worth is looking out there, and he's just saying right now, been there, done that. <laughs> know exactly how you feel, Giancarlo. But two balls crushed. This one didn't hit that padding a little bit below. Right on the ERA of Santiago. <laughs> That's pretty low already. Yeah, isn't it? which is at one three eight. Doesn't need to <laughs> knock anything off of it. Now Garrett Jones. An area that the Marlins scuffled in. On the road trip among others. He gave up late home runs. That was a big factor. But with runners in scoring position the club was not as good as they were. In their season opening homestand. It's almost like it balanced. They were so good that first week that overall runners in scoring position batting average is at 262, which I think is sixth in the National League. Not that bad. It just becomes more glaring when you're losing ball games and in the fashion that the Marlins lost games. You get to the end of a night where a late home run beats you, and Mike Redman would scratch his head and think to himself, Boy, we had chances early. And it shouldn't have come down to that. But it's baseball, it happens. Redman saying before the ballgame, they just have to find a way to, to keep it from happening. It's one of those things. You, you can't really work on in the batting cage. You can't work on in the video room. You can't work on it in the weight room. You, you just have to do it in the game. You have to have a good approach. 
You have to swing at strikes. You listen to, to hitters. I remember having this conversation with Carlos Lee, who had a terrific career batting average with runners in scoring position. And he just talked about the ability to drop your blood pressure, relax, and not get too tense. Because guys in that situation obviously want to perform. It's a the pressure's on. There's a guy in scoring position, especially for a team that's struggling. Yeah, you start grinding the sawdust out of the bat. It sounds easy just to relax, take, take that deep breath. And there have been some over the years that really have done it well. And El Caballo was one of them. We just saw another one in, in Carlos Ruiz. Jones fouls it off. Yadier Molina has been really good. How about uh, David Freeze, Alan Craig. Alan Craig has been one of the best yes. for the Cardinals the last uh, two, three years. Giancarlo Stan, a line drive double. With two outs, he's at second. 2-2 two -two coming to Jones. Jones swings and misses and strikes out. And Stanton is stranded at second. Underway with Washington up 1-0. In Miami tonight, the Marlins and the Nationals. And the Nationals have opened the ball game with a run, a worth double, which came an inch away from getting out, and a Harper triple, which was smacked into right center field. So Tyler Moore, Danny Espinosa, and Sandy Leon for the Nationals in the second inning. Moore getting the start against Hand as Adam LaRoche. Gets the night off. However, LaRoche's numbers against Brad Hand, pretty good. Yeah, LaRoche is off to uh, an unusually good start for the month of April, but they just wanted to get Tyler Moore in there and wanted to give LaRoche a night off. Moore looking for his first hit of the season. A fly ball to the right, hit well. Stanton back, he won't get it. And that one is gone off the top of the fence. And it skips out. So Moore, by an inch or two, hits a home run. Now Jason Worth hit his a lot longer. <laughs> and his hit the top of the wall and stuck. Well, a couple of years ago, 10 home runs for Tyler Moore and a little over 150 at bats. So he's a he's a nice compliment to have as a right-handed hitter and play a little bit in left field at first base. And gets his first hit of the year. And it's a big blast. That's big power. 
to the opposite field. Here's Espinosa, and he takes a strike. And so worth muttering to himself now. Jeez. See, Tyler Moore could go up to Jason Worth right now and say, that's how you hit a big boy. Breaking ball is a strike to Espinosa. One good bit of news for the Nationals amidst all of the injury stuff is that this guy's hitting again, Tommy, because his bat essentially disappeared last year after a promising start to his career in terms of power numbers for sure. I mean, he had just a buck 58 in 44 games last year. And Espinosa rips it into left field. Johnson over to cut it off. Espinosa is not going to stop until he is at second with a double. And the Nationals are teeing off on Brad Hand right now. They're a single away from the cycle. Tomorrow's a half price Tuesday. Nationals and Marlins screech apparently in the Bobblehead Museum downstairs. 7-10 start. Half price tickets on the Lexus Legends level. Baseline reserve, bullpen reserve, home run porch. It's the Miami Herald half price Tuesday. Pick up the Miami Herald or El Nuevo Herald tomorrow for your half price tickets. Well, the Nationals with four hits, two doubles, a triple, and a home run. Now, Leon. I was just looking, Rich, because the the thought tells you the Marlins pitchers are giving up a ton of home runs, and, and the one hit by Tyler Moore, number 11 on the season, the Marlins have allowed. The Mets have allowed 21. The Diamondbacks have allowed 20. So the perception is a whole bunch of home runs. The, the problem is recently the ones that have been hit have been big ones. Late. In close situations that have decided games. Rollins and Utley in Philly. Fastball in. And it's one and one. Worth's grand slam, Harper's homer, Desmond's grand slam in DC. And if you you want to go even further back, you can go back to the last game of the homestand. Alexei Amarista. Against Tom Kohler. Ruined a. Uh, outstanding performance by Kohler that night. They own takes in. Wilson Ramos is hurt again. Ramos broke a hamate bone in his hand. On a swing. And so Ramos. On the disabled list. Leon is up Jonathan Solano Donovan's brother is in triple A. Here's the two one. And it's hit into right field. A base hit. Stanton has it. Holding third. Is Espinosa and hand isn't fooling anyone. Actually, it was Nathan Evaldi that gave up the the Amarista home run. Yeah, on that slider that was down. It was uh, out of the strike zone. It was a really good pitch. Well, the uh, Nationals have officially hit for the cycle now, which is not a good sign with nobody out in the second inning. Two doubles, a triple, a homer, and there's your single. Well, I'll tell you what what else is not a good sign and for for Mike Redman for Chuck Hernandez Marlins pitching coach. They have to start thinking about this game now because you've got Kevin slowly the long man. So he, he realizes he, he might get the call if things continue this way. Here's Jordan Zimmerman. Shortens the bunt lays it down. Foul. We saw Kevin slowly. In the uh, Brad Hand game in D.C., come out of the bullpen. Zimmerman bunts it, hand to first, gets it out there. The sacrifice pushes Leon to scoring position. Now it's up to the top of the order, Rendon and Franzen. Two guys who hit the ball pretty well in the first inning. Rendon a fly ball to right field, and Franzen was robbed by Echeverria at short. Having watched the Nationals for three games in D.C., 
and seen them for an inning and a third here. You scratch your head and say, how in the world could they go to Atlanta and get swept? You know, in talking to uh, those who follow the Nationals, part of it is that right now the, the Braves have their number. It's just one of those matchups that doesn't work well for Washington. And Don takes a ball. It's one and zero. Oh. So the Nationals come into this game with a record of seven and five. They're six and zero oh against the Marlins and the Mets, and they're one and five against the Braves. In the scouting report on Rendon, and one of the things we talked about in D.C., he has a very quick path to the ball, and you don't often see a, a small guy in, in comparison to a, a much larger hitter. Hold his hands this low, Hut. And they have to be quick to hold them there. A lot of guys are disciplined enough that they can hold their hands there in their mind. That keeps them from going after pitches up above their hands. Because in order to hit that pitch, if your hands are there, you've got to really be quick. When you think of a big hitter that held his hands low, you think of Dave Winfield. Yeah, big, strong hitter. Hit the big hitch. But he always got it there on time. Espinosa at third, Leon is at second. Tyler Moore has homered. It's 2 0 Nationals, and Randon blisters one over the head of McGee. Into the corner. Two more come in. And the Nationals have cracked open a 4 0 lead to start the night here in Miami. Fifth double for Rendon already this season. Well, right now it's it's really demoralizing. There's a, a breaking ball that doesn't bite all the way inside. And there's a good look at those quick hands of Anthony Rendon. Just a shot over the head of Casey McGee. But very demoralizing to, to have an 0 6 trip, to not play well, give up some big home runs, to come home trying to get a little revenge against a team that swept, swept you in their ballpark, and all of a sudden a 4 0 lead early for the Nationals. Kevin Slowey starts the process of getting ready. So hand now still has to deal with more hot hitters. Kevin Franzen had a really good series in Atlanta. He's up now. You've got Worth on deck. He hit the ball off the top of the wall in deepest, darkest left center. And then Harper after Worth, and he had the RBI triple. Right now Brad Hand just missing with pitches not locating the fastball well uh, the, the curveball was a pitch at Rendon hit. Of course hand is in the rotation with the injury to Jacob Turner. Turner injured himself taking batting practice in the cage in Washington D.C. Counts two and one. Three runs here in the second. Marlins yesterday got six innings out of Henderson Alvarez. He gave up the three runs. Copyrighted telecast presented by the authority of the Marlins may not be reproduced, retransmitted in any form. Counts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Marlins. 
Not that the Marlins would like to retransmit the first two innings of this ball game. Even the accounts and descriptions. And descriptions, yeah. Let alone the pictures and the words. Friends and walks. And a messy start gets messier. And here comes work. The question is, is Slowey ready yet? And does Mike Redman want Worth to get another crack at hand here? Slowey hasn't had a whole lot of time to get loose. And Slowey's not a, uh, a microwave reliever type guy. He's a, a former starter who's got to go through the routine, a little stretch here, a little bit of that, and ease into it. Now, the other thing, too, it's, it's hard to pull the plug on your starter so early when you know that even after Slowey, you're going to need some arms. Breaking ball misses and it counts one ball and one strike. Now that pitch. You can see was right at the knees and. On the corner but he didn't get the call. Two and one to work. Three doubles for Worth, couple homers. Rendon at second, Franz in at first. Two and two. Jason Worth always with that good on base percentage. Came into this game on base percentage 405. You know the start to his Nationals career was kind of fits and starts had an injury year. Not a great statistical year but last year as I noted man he just blew up. Drives this one into right center field it's it a long way Yelich in full flight Stanton's there and Stanton makes the catch. Both runners thought maybe that would drop in and they were. Out ahead of the pack no one was tagging up. Yelich and Stanton. Just discussing it, but the Marlins get an out, albeit a long one. Well, even even an out is to the warning track. A good play by Stanton, even though Yelich was making the call. And boy, you don't want a collision between those two. Yelich did play center field in the minor leagues, though he has been playing left field in the major leagues. He, he's seen some time out there in center, and he's in center tonight because Marcelo Zuna is nursing a sore foot. Ozuna is available to pinch hit. Now Harper. Harper's last two at bats against Brad Hand. A three run homer. And tonight an RBI triple. You know, when we went into Washington, Harper was three for 21. All of a sudden, he has his average at 320. Yelich is there and makes the catch. Three more runs for the Nationals. And a 4 nothing lead.
está disponible por Sa. See, Dad keeps saying to open the sign and look at the first base camera and you'll get on. Dad is television savvy. And happy eighth birthday to that youngster. Yeah, happy birthday. Tyler Moore with a home run started that top of the second. And before the Nationals were done, three more were across. They built a 4-0 lead against a Marlins team that is reeling right now, having dropped seven in a row. Casey McGee, Jared Saltalamaca, and Reed Johnson. Well, a little different feel for Jordan Zimmerman in this one. Breaking ball misses outside. And actually, Tommy, you think about it, this is a different feel for the Marlins because in this seven game losing streak, they haven't had more than maybe one, possibly two games where they've fallen behind by this much early. They've been tight games. games well, they had that five nothing lead in DC that they gave up, but then regained the lead. They had the, uh, the close game, they get close games in Philadelphia. He holds up on a fastball that's up and in. And it's two and two. And now you've got Jordan Zimmerman emboldened with this four-nothing lead. A guy that knows what to do with a lead. We apologize that we have such great home plate audio and for that profanity. America's new sports network is the place to turn before every slam every goal every game with America's pregame only on Fox Sports 1 streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Tune into America's pregame weeknights at 6 Eastern only on Fox Sports 1. Find Fox Sports 1 on your cable satellite provider. Just go to FoxSports1.com. And the other tough part tough bit of news that we have to relay to you it looks like Jordan Zimmerman's a different pitcher than he was in Washington as well his first start of the year he had the flu and many with the Nationals that follow them and, and have watched Zimmerman pitch over the last three four years felt that the remnants of that flu were evident in his start against the Marlins which was as we noted the shortest in his career Salta Lamacchia Bends out of the way of that fastball. We didn't have a chance, I don't think, to scout Zimmerman in D.C. He wasn't in there long enough, but easy delivery, three-plus pitches. And we've talked about his ability as, a, as an athlete, a, a tremendous uh, high school wide receiver. South Lamacchia runs into one, drives it to right over Worsehead. It bounces high off the wall and then into the seats. And Jared Saltalamacchia has himself a double. So the Marlins have two hits. They're both doubles. And Reed Johnson's coming up. Yeah, the two doubles have both been hit well. So the, the good news is that you just try to peck away. There's a lot of, a lot of game left in this one tonight. Nice swing by Saltalamacchia for his two base hit. on his way possibly to another season of 40 doubles which he had last year with the Red Sox. Johnson getting the start with Ozuna out. Sliding Yelich into center. Now I know it's a small sample size but it's a good one. For Reed Johnson. Four at bats in his career against Jordan Zimmerman, and he's three for four. That's a fair ball. Down the line it goes. Salta Lamacchia will score. Johnson around first and then holds on a terrific play. Kevin Franzen. Came up as an infielder. He got to that ball at the wall and somehow kept Reed Johnson from a double. Yeah, that sample size looking a lot better right now. About four for five now. He really brings his hands in and turns on a pitch that's in 
and gets it past the third baseman Anthony Rendon. But you're right about France and he he went into infielders mode there and just picked and fired. Good job by the veteran Johnson too. Reed Johnson takes a big turn. You know in a close game and a tie game. Maybe later in the game he might try to go to second base. But he picks this up right here. He knows that his ball club's trailing. He knows that it's early in the game. And he headed back to first. And Chaburia now. Well, Danny Echeverria is hot. He's one of the silver linings of that uh, miserable road trip that he has continued to hit. It's caught and it's out there. It's a double play. Espinosa to Moore. Johnson is caught off. Echeverria stung it. Marlins get a run, but trail it 4 1. Fan photo for a chance to have your photo shown in an upcoming broadcast. Brought to you by AT&T. We'll show one tonight. FL fan photo. We just like to change it up to make sure you're paying attention. So FL fan photo. The selfie has uh, taken over not only baseball, but ever. I'm still waiting for a player to, to hit one out. And then stop at second and take a selfie with a shortstop. <laughs> Ian Desmond, Tyler Moore, Danny Espinosa. Brad Hand has wobbled here. And Desmond opens with a, a base hit to center. Now here's a, a point in time where if you're Mike Redman, you you're not gonna wait too long on Brad Hand. He's going to be on a short leash because you've seen your club have some pretty good swings and at bats against Zimmerman and get a run and creep back a little bit closer. So you you're not going to waste too much time if Brad Hand continues to struggle. Tyler Moore banged one off the top of the wall in right field for a home run. In case you missed it, here it is. We've had two balls at the very top of the wall. Jason Worth hit the very top in left field. So much so that it was actually reviewed. It was a double, it stayed a double, but that one skipped off the top. Giancarlo stand about three feet from the top of the wall. In left center field. He 
in the news and notes department in baseball today. Remember A.J. Burnett's start against the Marlins. He felt he had a groin issue. He actually has an inguinal hernia, which doesn't sound very pleasant at all. Burnett got a cortisone injection in that uh, area. That doesn't sound very pleasant at all either. However, it, it sounds like. Can you have good news on this story? He's going to try. Burnett says he thinks it's something that is manageable and he's going to deal with it and try to pitch through it. To right, Stanton is back and he's there and makes the catch. Be kind of interesting to follow his uh, next outing if, in fact, he does take his regular turn. That's one of those injuries where I mean I've heard of sports hernia maybe that's another word for sports hernia. I've just not seen that word before in front of hernia. How how was it spelled? Hold on. I N G U I N A L. And I, I mean I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly but I would read that as inguinal. Brad Hand misses outside. The count is 1 0. If you've just joined us, the Nationals, who saw Brad Hand about five days ago, have jumped him here early in this ballgame with big hits. Worth a double. Harper an RBI triple. Moore a home run. Espinosa a double. Rendon a two run double. And Espinosa rolls it foul. Uh, you, you look back, uh, remember in spring training with Brad Hand. Brad and, and Tom Kohler. I think we're kind of battling. Battling it out for that number five spot. They both had good springs. For Brad Hand an ERA just a little over two he had 20 strikeouts. Just six walks and 20 innings. Kohler got the fifth uh, starting spot and Brad went to the bullpen. And had a couple of nice outings out of the bullpen. Into right center field. That's well hit and it splits the outfielders. It goes to the wall. Desmond is racing around third. He's going to score. The Nationals have another triple. Now's about that time Kevin Slowey has to get heated up in a hurry. You're at a point where it's not totally out of control yet. And Brad Hand just hasn't fooled many of the Nationals hitters. And how about Espinosa? A double and a triple already tonight. And that's the thing with Zimmerman on the disabled list for a month to a month and a half. If Espinosa can hit, he's a terrific second baseman. Then they can slide Rendon over to third. And the loss won't be as dramatic as some expect. Ground ball, runner coming home. Echeverria staring Espinosa down will run him back to third. A flip there and a tag there. Nice job by Espinosa to stay in the rundown long enough for Leon to get to second base. And if you're the, the batter who hit the ball, in this case, Sandy Leon. You kind of look over your shoulder and you see what's transpiring over there between home and third. And you're right, Espinosa stays in there long enough. Good job, though, by the Marlins to get the uh, fielder's choice 6 5. But in the meantime, Leon gets the second base. Jordan Zimmerman takes a strike. Leon is at second. Zimmerman swings and misses. I always have to remind myself whenever I look for, I'm looking for Jordan Zimmerman's offensive numbers in the media guide. His name comes after Ryan Zimmerman. 
because he has two ends at the end of his name. He does have a career home run. And as I find that note, he strikes out. Good timing. Nationals add on. It's 5 1. Jordan Zimmerman and the Nationals on top of the Marlins 5 to 1. Fox Sports Florida the other day showed up in the transaction column. They have signed a free agent pitcher with more news on that. Here's Craig Mintervini. Yes, we're going to look much better in the company softball game. Carl Pavano joining us. We're all excited to have a guy we love covering, one of our favorite Marlins back in the world champion days. And Carl, you're bringing your, the dulcet tone to the airwaves. We're happy to have you at Fox. What do you think? Craig, how you doing, man? Good. Great to be here. Well, you're going to be uh, you're going to be doing the game tomorrow night, making your debut with Richard Tommy, and you're going to be in the studio. What what can fans expect from the broadcaster, Carl Pavon? Well, it's a little new to me, so I am a, I am a little nervous. I hope they hang in there with me. But I'm lucky to have guys like you, Richie and Tommy and Preston and Allison, to bounce a lot of these questions that I have off and gain some experience through that. So that, that's been really helpful. You had a difficult decision. You were working your tail off in the off season to try and come back. From an injury and still pitch, and you had you were in that spot in your career where, do I keep going after it, or have I had such a nice career and I'm happy? How was that process for you? How tough? Yeah, it wasn't easy, but you know, luckily I, I had a long career and I had some medical issues that really forced the issue. So, uh, it, you know, I had a nice opportunity here to maybe get into something and stay in the game and work with some great guys and have some fun. So, I took that in stride. You see Brad Hand is up here. What have you noticed from him tonight on the mound? Obviously he's been roughed up here with the five runs eight hits so far through just three innings. To be honest with you Craig. Coming out of relief in Washington he did such a great job. I expected a little different outcome. You know, I think the ball's just elevated a little bit as you see a lot of the damage is done bun, bun by right handed hitters and a lot of them are playing with this right center gap. That usually means you're getting the ball up and elevated out over the plate where they could get their arms extended and you know they're also playing with this left field line. So uh, he's not fooling anyone, and the case isn't that he's behind in the count. I just think he's getting a little too much of the plate. Are you going to enjoy breaking down the pitchers? Because, you know, over the years, our analysts have all been pretty much either like Tommy, an outstanding first baseman outfielder in his long career, Cliff Floyd, Preston, uh, Gary Carter, who was a catcher in the early days, the late great Gary Carter, and, and now a pitching perspective, and you get to break it down. Yeah, I mean, I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's a, it's a pretty cool dynamic, and all the other all the other bases seem to be covered. So I'm hoping I can, you know, what I add in will help out. We're looking forward to it. We'll see you tomorrow night. Do you have your makeup yet, Carl? Yes, I'm working on it actually right now. <laughs> okay, guys, I know you're looking forward to it too. You'll get to break Carl into the booth, but for the most part, he'll be in the studio with us, uh, helping out along with uh, Preston Wilson, of course, all year long, guys. All right, thank you, Craig, and we look forward to uh, having. Have you here tomorrow night 
he's already been doing his homework, asking lots of questions, which is always a good sign. Yeah, he has. And uh, interesting, too, uh, I remember in, in spring training when uh, Pavy came came up and was uh, chatting with us. We were sitting there. I, I'm not even sure who was pitching. It was one of the Cardinal pitchers. He was breaking down some things he was doing. And I said, good, that, that's, that's just what you have to do. That's good stuff. So uh, we wish him luck. Look forward to having him up here tomorrow. Jordan Zimmerman gets two quick outs on the ground. He saw Mike Redmond come out and consider a challenge by the time he got out and was conversing with Marty Foster. The Marlin replay facility had signaled or actually called into the dugout to say he was out, don't challenge, and Redmond trotted back. Ryan Sandberg and I were chatting about the whole replay sequence and how it's worked. He said, you know, one thing it's done, it's improved umpire. Manager relations. Because well, well, you talked about it the other day. It, it's because in the past, when managers would go out, they'd be the they'd have smoke coming out of their ears. They'd be arguing with the other. Now they come out. There's a little more friendly terms. Yeah, they're they're conversational. Just waiting for the thumbs up or the thumbs down. Seven pitches from Jordan Zimmerman. The Nationals in command. Five one. The Nationals on top in Miami. Crazy good deal with the Chevron Crazy 8 ticket offer. Visit a participating Chevron to fill up with Chevron with Techron gasoline. Bring your receipt to the ticket office for up to 60% off a lower level ticket. Restrictions apply. Next Crazy 8 Wednesday is this Wednesday against the Nationals at 710. Well, here's Kevin Slowey. Well, we saw. Brad Hand lead the inning off and, and hit. And the reason he hit is that you're at a point in the game, you you really don't want to waste uh, one of your pinch hitters and use in that situation with nobody on base. So Brad will have to just kind of regroup in between starts, try to figure out a little better location. So now he turns it over to Kevin Slowey. And remember, one of those pinch hitters is a guy that probably. Marcelo Zuna, if he wanted to double switch at all late in the ballgame, he's only good to pinch hit. I don't know that the, the Marlins want him running around in the field. Bouncer back to Slowey, and this is what Kevin Slowey does best. Throws strikes, he gets outs. He's like the hopper without the sinker. That's right, he has a, a little more. Normal delivery, a pretty much a full repertoire of pitches. A guy who was a very successful starting pitcher.
when he was with the Minnesota Twins and even early on last year before he was injured. And, and at this point in his career, he knows his role. Rich, you were talking about Kevin Franson. It was a kind of a nice find by the Nationals. He was released by the Phillies in spring training, right toward the end of spring training. And the Nationals picked him up on uh, March 26th. Franson out to Dietrich. Slowly, a couple ground balls. And here comes Worth. Boy, the, the Nationals just cut right through Brad Hand. Bryce Harper followed Jason Worth's double in the first with a triple. That was the first run. Tyler Moore homered to lead off the second. Two run double by Anthony Rendon followed that. RBI triple by Espinosa in the third. And here is Worth in all his glory. Hair flowing, beard growing. I would think at some point in time. This season, he'll have to get things trimmed up just a bit. Oh, come on. You think he'll let it go all year? No, he'd probably trim it up a little bit. Yeah. Although, yeah, I, mean, I would think. It, how, how cool is it that he comes to the plate at Nationals Park with the, uh, with the Game of Thrones theme from yeah. the HBO series? Worth the center field, and Yelich is there. Kevin Slowey goes one, two, three through the fourth. Brought to you by your South Florida Chevrolet dealer. In Miami tonight, a decidedly different start from Jordan Zimmerman than the last time out. The last time out was against the Marlins. Just an inning and two third. Derek Dietrich's two run homer was a big blow in that one. And look at the lead that the Nationals have provided. They have chased Brad Hand. And Zimmerman faces Giancarlo Stanton, Garrett Jones. Casey McGee here in the fourth. Stanton coming off uh, that series in Philly where he had the big two homer night. One that ended up out near Tony Luke's cheesesteak stand. 470 feet away. Stanton's had an interesting run against uh, Jordan Zimmerman. He's five for 20. We saw the, the fifth hit that doubled. Three of those five hits have been home runs. That's Perfect pitch there. Knee high strike on the inside part. Well, maybe not. I think. 
use the term uh, that Zimmerman was not flashy. And I don't know that many flashy players come out of Wisconsin Stevens Point. Stanton off the glove of Rendon, and he's got a base hit. Stanton is two for two. So Giancarlo continues to swing it well. He's got a double and a single. Miami has their leadoff runner aboard. And here comes Garrett Jones. Another hard hit ball and a great effort by Rendon at third. He deflects it, but Desmond realizes he didn't have a play, so he wisely hung on. Now, we talked about Rendon, who was playing second when Ryan Zimmerman was active. Third base is really his natural position. So that's where he's going to be while Ryan Zimmerman's on the disabled list. Jones swings and misses. I know it's early, Tommy. The Marlins in game number 14. The one thing that Garrett Jones is going to have to reverse 50 at bats, 23 strikeouts. Obviously, you do the math and give him a full season of at bats. In the uh, mid 500s, and suddenly he's in Mark Reynolds' territory. Well, and he spoke of the strikeouts himself. He knows that he has to cut down, cut back on those. You know, his years with Pittsburgh, four years in a row, over 100 strikeouts, but remember, he was hitting 20 home runs. And he wasn't playing a lot against left handed pitching. Here's the 1 1. And that could change with the arrival of Rafael for call because when the Marlins face a lefty with for call at second, obviously he, a switch hitter, would stay atop the lineup. But you could put a, a Jeff Baker at first base. Who, by the way, Rafael for call, one for one with a run scored, playing uh, for Jupiter in Port St. Lucie on a rehab assignment. He'll need some games. He's not going to just be two or three games and he's ready to go. Got him with the breaking ball again. And so 24 strikeouts and 51 at bats for Garrett Jones. A lot of right handers. You see him do this to lefties down and in, try to bury that breaking ball. And for the most part, a lefty will swing over. It's a tough pitch to get to. And Zimmerman made a good one. Now McGee called that on strike in the second. McGee led a couple of fastballs get by him, and he took them both for strikes, the second of which was strike three. Stanton trots down to second. Our crack staff, and we have members of the crack staff not only in, in various locations, but in all walks of life. Andrew, just to get it straight, says it's pronounced in Gwinnell. In Gwinnell. It's a type of hernia in the hip that affects men. Was Andrew a doctor? No, but he plays one on uh, television. Does not say that in his Twitter profile. McGee, a fly ball to the right, worth tracking it. Makes the catch. We were talking about A.J. Burnett's injury. And it's uh, an inguinal hernia, which apparently is a hernia in the hip that affects men. I think for guys like us, a uh, sports hernia probably works better. Here's Salta Lamacchia.
Double in the second. Takes a breaking ball down low. Jed Jerko of the San Diego Padres is a lot happier and wealthier today. A six year, $35 million extension through 2020. You know, that, that says a couple of things. Obviously, the, the Padres feel very highly about their second baseman because Jerko was a rookie last year, hit over 20 home runs. It uh, takes away his arbitration, I think, a, a year or two of free agency. But they're taking a gamble on a guy that's really only played one full year in the major leagues. So Telemachia swings and misses. You they, can really you, you can hit it big on a contract like that. Yeah. Whether Evan Longoria mm -hmm. or someone. Well, they got burned on on the similar contract that when they signed Cameron Maven. And unfortunately for Cameron Maven, he's been hurt a good part of it. One one pitch is up. Reed Johnson's on deck. But you know what? I, I think more and more clubs are going to do it. In in my opinion, you'd rather get burned early in a career on a lot less dollars than lock in a, a, a Robinson Cano and have him producing or hoping he produces when he's 40 years old for a lot more dollars. So Lamakia takes down low. The count is three and one. Starling Marte and Chris Archer, other guys that come to mind that just had contracts similar to that. Here, Salta Lamakia trying to get Stanton home. Marlins trying to climb back in this ball game, down 5-1 in the bottom of the fourth against Jordan Zimmerman. Took a shot at it. Yeah, just challenged him right there. Salty knew he was going to see fastball. He got it. He had a good rip. Just missed it. So with the score five one, three one count, you're saying, all right, here's the fastball. One thing Zimmerman tried to do, he tried to make it up, make sure it was up a little bit. Lost him, and Salty Lamaki is aboard, and here comes Reed Johnson. Johnson cranked a ball down the left field line for an RBI single. It looked like an RBI double, but Kevin Franzen cut it off and made a really strong throw to second to keep him at first. That's the only run of the night for Miami. The Nationals have scored five times with a barrage of hits against Brad Hand. They chased Hand after just three innings. And Sandy Leon is on his way out to talk to Zimmerman and Desmond to make sure everybody's on the same page. Three against the Nationals. Thursday is actually an off day for Miami. And the Seattle Mariners are here on Friday night for a three game series. Robinson Cano and the Mariners off to a, a decent start. Seattle at six and five. Johnson, center field. Harper is there and he makes the catch. Miami leaves a couple. We've played four in Miami tonight, and the Nationals are up by four.
proud to collaborate with Stand Up to Cancer, a groundbreaking initiative created to accelerate, innovate cancer research. It gets new therapies to patients quickly in order to save lives. For more information, visit foxsportssupports.com. Rich Waltz along with Tommy Hutton. Kevin Slowey has come in, and Tommy, he worked quickly, he worked effectively. He got three quick outs in the fourth. Though he gets Bryce Harper, Ian Desmond, and Tyler Moore here. One of the uh, one of the key things for a guy who's in the position of a Kevin Slowey, and he does it really well, is to come in and throw strikes. And for the most part, when Kevin has come into games like this, he tries to restore order, so to speak. And usually he throws a lot of strikes. Fastball to Harper. And it's 0 1. Bryce Harper swinging the bat well. The Marlins saw that in D.C. despite his lowly numbers at the time. That's a foul ball. You could hear the first base umpire call it. And Harper continued to swing it well in Atlanta. Yeah, but right now on a seven game hitting streak, Rich. This ball just foul. We have Foxmo out there in right field. And remember, on the ground, all it has to do is go over the base in the eyes of the umpire. That's not a reviewable play. Fair or foul on the infield is not reviewable. It is on the outfield. So good call by Marty Foster down there. I think his instant replay expands and look. The, the airwaves and the internet alive today with a, a couple of calls that were missed this weekend. Some of the kinks that are being worked out. Remember when this was rolled out from Joe Torre and Tony La Russa and everybody, they said it, it's a three year process. There are going to be kinks and bumps in the road, just like there were in, in the NFL when they unveiled replay. Yeah, I think we'll certainly see changes made. If uh, if not this year, we'll see changes made next year. But yeah, it's it's going to take some time. It's a new process. It's new to everybody. Here's the one-two. Hit hard and by Echeverria, and in the gap, Harper running hard, round first, not stopping, on his way to second, and he is in there. And that's the way Bryce Harper plays the game. You can criticize him all you want for throwing helmets and, and breaking bats, but you can't criticize him for how he plays the game between the lines. Let's see what this ball does. First of all, it's a pitch up and out over the plate. The ball scoots and stays down. It's a tough error. It's going to be an error. Charge to Echeverria. I know there are always people at home watching. Who will say on a ball like that? Why didn't he get in front of it? That's not the way to play that ball. First of all, Harper can fly. If you get in front of it, it might take you into left field too because he hit it so hard. He's positioning his feet. And Chaburia this time to his left. And with a quick release, he gets Desmond at first. He's positioning his feet so he can pick it, plant, and throw. And get something on the throw. And the ball scooted on him if he's in front of it it still scoots and he probably bobbles it too and Tommy his momentum would take him into shallow left field and there's no chance he would get Harper exactly infield in again as Desmond is able to move the runner up Tyler Moore it's so really it's, by the way excuse me Rich it's really only the first error other than that one lackadaisical throw that Echeverria had uh, last week, first week of the season. Remember, he had a, a routine play. He didn't get set, and he made an error. And that's just second error of the year, that one there. I would not call that one routine, though. That one was not that, routine. That was scorched no. pretty good. <laughs> More homeward in the second. Flied to right in the third. Slowy to the plate. Soft pop, right field. Stanton in. Harper is not tagging. 
Now, if he was Billy Hamilton, he might have. Saw Billy Hamilton score on a ball. It, it probably a little more shallow than that the other day, but Harper putting the brakes on that time. And it even amazed Marty Brenneman, Hall of Fame broadcaster for the Reds. That's the play, though, Rich, that what if he does tag? And there's a throw to the plate. If we just let him just let him go across the plate. What's the catcher do? Ladies and gentlemen, Tommy Hutton has just, and I want to go on the record. Tommy <laughs> Hutton has just pushed his own buttons. <laughs> Normally, I'm the guy that triggers that or something on the field. Or maybe a scorekeeper. Or an umpire. Or an occasional player. Hut pushing his own button as Danny Espinosa takes a, a breaking ball. And, and one of the things that Tommy is referring to is Joe Torrey today apparently contacting the general manager of the Phillies, Ruben Amaro Jr., and saying that the umpires got the call at the plate in the Marlins game wrong, and that the umpires who, from what we understand and were told at the time when Ryan Sandberg came out on the Tony Gwynn Jr. slide, Said that he had a lane to slide and that Sandberg would then challenge safer out. Apparently, Torrey felt that he didn't have the lane that Jeff Mathis was blocking the plate. And if, if called the way Major League Baseball interprets the rule, the runner would be safe because Mathis was blocking the plate. First of all, with his, was he blocking a little bit? Yeah, he had the ball. Secondly, it didn't. Stop Gwynn's slide at all. He continued straight forward at the plate. That pitch uh, hits Espinosa and allows us to, to continue the discussion. It wasn't like he hit Mathis and all of a sudden bounced away from the plate. He's got his leg out, and and to me, that's the way that's the way catchers have been taught for a hundred years. Understood, and I think for managers and catchers, and even base runners now, the question is, at what point, as the runner approaches the plate, does the catcher perceived as not having the ball? Because if the catcher catches the ball and he's in front of the plate, and the runner's five feet away or ten feet away, is that okay? It's a, it's too fine a line, and it, you're going to say, okay, what constitutes a lane? Well, if the catcher just stands three feet in front of home plate, then everybody will score. Give Tony Gwynn Jr. credit though, because he didn't complain. No, well, give him give him credit in this sense. He slid feet first right at the plate, which is what Major League Baseball is trying to encourage exactly with the runners, and that's something the Marlins did not do. Remember John Carlos Stanton slide. On the road trip, where he did the matrix type get around, get the hand in, when a catcher was even more in front of the plate, and had Stanton forced the issue, then maybe there would have been, if not an overruling there, or at least a response from baseball along those same lines. It'll certainly be something to follow. That was me diplomatically As trying the to. Year goes on. And good job, thanks, Rich. Diffuse the whole situation. <laughs> Called strike three, slowy. Strikes him out. Still 5 1 Nationals.
right now. It's the bottom of the fifth. It's Miami and Washington. And they play on Wednesday at 7-10. Kids eat free on Wednesday nights. Every kid, 12 and under, with a ticket. We'll get a coupon for a free KM Beef Frank, a bag of Frito-Lay chips, a small Pepsi, or Aquafina water. Get your tickets today at Marlins.com. Hey, by the way, not only do you get all that, you get to see Jose Fernandez pitch Wednesday night against these Nationals. Tanner Roark will pitch for the Nationals. Steven Strasburg pitches tomorrow night for the Nationals. Tom Kohler for the Fish. And tomorrow night, a special telecast with three-man boot. Carl Pavano makes his broadcasting debut. It's a good night to have Pavi in the booth because obviously it's a Strasburg start and Kohler has pitched well. Those two actually pitch very well against each other in D.C. And we'll have tweets and emails too. Here is Adani Echevarria. Slowy is on deck. Christian Yelich to follow. That's almost the same spot he hit the first one. The first one was caught right at the shoe tops by Espinosa. Two good swings, but two outs from Echevarria. And here comes Slowy. By the way, remember, we were talking about A.J. Burnett and the hernia. Andrew gave us the, the definition of the hernia and the pronunciation. He is a doctor. He's actually a resident in internal medicine at Jackson Memorial. So now we have a doctor on the crack staff. On the crack staff. That's, uh, that's good to know. Again, no pinch hitter here. You want Slowey to give you as many innings as possible. And it, for those that say, well, why wouldn't you pinch hit for Brad Hand early in the ball game? It may speak to the availability of Marcelo Zuna, who fouled that ball off his foot and left the ballpark on crutches yesterday. That, uh, yeah, maybe an emergency he could hit, but Mike Redman is working with a short bench. Meanwhile, Jordan Zimmerman is snapped back to form. This is his third start. His ERA opened in the eights. And that's not the pitcher that uh, you and I have seen grow up in the Nationals organization. Well, last year, you mentioned earlier, 19 game winner, 325 ERA. That's why it was unusual to see him with such an early exit in that game. Last week in Washington. Joe West said swing. Slowy strikes out. It's, it seems to me that in, in check swings and, and things like that, pitchers never get the benefit of the doubt from umpires because they're pitchers. They're not card carrying members of the hitters guild. Yeah the umpire probably thinks you know you probably want to go back on the on the bench sit in the dugout anyway. That's a, a question for Carl Pavano. Yelich to left field. That's a base hit. And Yelich's hit streak is now at nine straight. As he singles with two outs here in the fifth inning. Singles with that patented Christian Yelich swing. Down, inside out, on the line. Look at it in Foxbow. This is beautiful. It's also interesting watching Derek Dietrich on deck, who who was actually timing everything as as well as Yelich. Dietrich got out in front of that one. Shallow right worth. Makes the catch, and the Marlins are done in the fifth. Five in the books. Zimmerman is cruising, and the Nats lead at 5 1.
Jared Salta Lamaki with the standard catcher's mask. Old fashioned style, not that hockey style, but he has a little twist on the way he wears not necessarily the mask, but the helmet. Now you look at most catchers like the Washington catcher tonight, Sandy Leone, typical old fashioned mask, helmet backwards. You've been seeing that since you were a little leaguer, probably. Well, take a look at Jared Salta Lamaki. He puts the helmet on forward. And puts the mask over that. I asked him about it after watching him a couple of days. I think I've seen that before, but I can't recall who. And he said, I never really saw anybody do it, at least in my time here. But he said he started doing it about five years ago. He told me he was having throwing problems. And with the helmet typically to the back, he said, I, I noticed the third base coach, the first base umpire, I see everything. He said this was almost like, like blinders on a horse for him. It, it narrowed his vision and his focus at second base and he said he stuck with it and he's gotten used to it he said the helmet feels fine it uh, wears fine the straps right there as you see a base hit by zimmerman and for him it works guys have you seen catchers wear it forward i think i've seen it jose fernandez mentioned to me that a lot of catchers in cuba wear the helmet forward like that i've seen catchers wear helmets forward but with a smaller bill yeah yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think if I can think of one. I'm, I'm sure it's been done, but I, I just can't remember. Right, you don't you don't really put that together, but for Salty, it works. It does look funny when you look at it now from the back. If it works, it works. <laughs> Jordan Zimmerman singling here in the sixth. Brad Hand lasted just three innings for Miami, and Kevin Slowey had to come in and try to pick up the pieces. So far, he's done that. The Nationals left a couple on base in the fifth. Rendon in the leadoff spot, Franzen and Worth to follow. Rendon, a, a product of Rice University. Smacks it up the middle. Dietrich lost his footing, found the ball, gets the out. Barely. Zimmerman didn't slide. Marlins get just the one out. It's one of those balls that if it's picked cleanly and it's not an easy ball Dietrich does everything he wants to smother it. he wants to make sure he keeps it in front of him. If he picks it cleanly it's a double play but he's able to regroup and find it and at least get the out at second base. And by the way Rich that ball that was hit by Harper that shot that was by Enter Maria. It's been ruled a double now. So Harper has a triple and a double. The Nationals have 10 hits to go with their five runs. And here is Franzen. You see the gaudy numbers that Franzen had? He's the only Nat without a hit tonight. He was five for eight in Atlanta. Very good pinch hitter last year. In fact, he led Major League Baseball with 14 pinch hits. Knows the division with the Phillies. Got jammed. Stanton was playing shallow, and he's there to make a nice running catch. One of the benefits of having Stanton in spring training healthy is the fact that he was able to play an entire spring training, not worry about his legs, not worry about an injury. And as you pointed out in previous springs, that hasn't been the case. And it always took about a month for his defense to catch up. Yeah, that's a great point because it, it did and it does take a toll on your defense. You, you kind of focus with a guy like Stanton, you just look at his hitting. But yeah, when you don't get the reps in spring training, it, it always did take him a while to, to get a little bit better into defensive shape. Jason Worth. Worth's double at the very top of the wall and left. Since then, he's flied out twice. That grand slam that he hit against Carlos Marmol in Wednesday's 10 7 win, his first grand slam as a national, his fourth career grand slam. We, 
we've talked over the years about Worth's road to the major leagues before really settling in as a Philly. Well, one of the guys that really liked him and helped revive his career was Pat Gillick. A lot of minor league time early on with the Orioles. Moved on to Toronto, but uh, played sparingly. He was a Dodger for a while. Missed the whole year in 06. That was because he was hit by a pitch in a spring game against the Marlins. And then once he got to Philadelphia, that's really where he settled in. I believe it was Gillick that drafted him in Baltimore and then brought him to Philadelphia. Matt Gillick in the Hall of Fame. And rightfully so. Worth sprays that one. Dietrich on the outfield grass goes to first in time. Kevin Slowey, three scoreless innings, but the Marlins have work to do. In Miami tonight, the Marlins return home after an 0-6 road trip, and the Nationals have not been easy on them. 5-1, Washington. Giancarlo Stanton takes a fastball inside. Garrett Jones, Casey McGee, and Jared Saltalamacchia against Jordan Zimmerman, looking for his first win of the season. That's a pitch that missed low and in, a pitch that Zimmerman got against Stanton. Singled in the fourth, doubled in the first. Zimmerman's had some some low pitch innings. He, he's right in that 66 uh, pitch count area, working here in the sixth inning. All right, Hut. It's three and zero. Oh, you're down five one. It, you're, you got Stanton at the plate. You green light him? I would. Yeah. Why not? Takes a strike. Out at the plate. You can really see that Zimmerman's trying to crowd him and keep that fastball in under his hands. He's got the count at three and two. He's got the luxury of a four run lead, too. So he spins one up there and Stanton swings and misses. That's a nice comeback from a 3 0 count.
slider. Pretty good pitch to hit. That's what you see pitchers do with with John Carlo. They'll they'll crowd him in and stay away with breaking stuff. Garrett Jones swings and misses. He has struck out twice. Limited schedule in baseball tonight. There's strike two. Braves and Phillies in Philadelphia. Atlanta sporting an eight and four record. And on top, two to one in the sixth. Pirates and Reds in Cincinnati. Reds six to five. That's in the sixth. Seattle is opening up four game series in Texas. They'll play four in Texas before they get here. On Friday night. Jones gets into one, drives it right field and deep and gone. Zimmerman had had his way with Jones, striking him out in the first, striking him out in the fourth, but Jones got around and drills it out. His second homer. One of the things that's gotten Garrett Jones in trouble is that swing gets a little long, but this is one of the better swings he's had uh, all year. Pulls his hands in. They want that fastball down and in under the hands. It's up a little bit, but he gets to it and hammers it. That's a line drive home run, but a good swing, probably his best swing all year. So that's a, a good sign that hopefully Garrett Jones has turned the corner a little bit. Now McGee takes outside. One of the frustrating things about the road trip and this losing streak is that the Marlins have been doing some things right. Six straight games now they've hit a home run. I don't know if they ever did that last year. Last year was such a power shortage. In fact, they didn't. John Chimchuk, our baseball historian, notes August of 2012, last time the Marlins had homered in six straight, and they've done it here. Well, we've talked about this losing streak. Marlins have lost seven in a row. Last year, they had a stretch where they lost seven in a row. I don't have to re remind Mike Redman of this. They won a couple of games and then they had a nine game losing streak. But so much of that was lack of offense and, and the offense it's had its moments but that hasn't been the major problem. Zimmerman made a, a nice pitch at the knees. Two two. That one right at the knees as well. Evan Gaddis and Ryan Howard have homered in that game in Philly. Cardinals trying to cool off the uh, hot Milwaukee Brewers. Gaddis's home run was a two run shot to make it 2 1. So far, they are 1 0. Brewers at 10 and 2. They've won nine in a row. Lance Lynn and Matt Garza. It's a good pitching matchup. Brewers haven't lost a road game this year. That is strike three called. McGee was on his way to first. Let's take a look at this one. It's in. Well, uh, Casey McKee has a good argument. He's not going to win it with Joe West, but clearly that slider kind of didn't bite, stayed inside. Strikeout of Stan, a home run by Jones, a strikeout of McGee. Here's Salt to Lamacchia. Zimmerman's pitch count now at 83. Remember, the Nationals have a 
Very solid back end of that bullpen. It's all to Lamonti, a high fly ball. It's Harper out there tonight, and he makes the catch. Sixth inning is over. Marlins get one of them back. Garrett Jones, his second of the season. Marlins fell in a 5-1 hole with the Nationals jumping on Brad Hand. Hey Rich, while we have a couple seconds here, want to take a time out and wish a happy birthday to our A2, Bobby Dorf. Bobby always makes sure we're on the air. Everything sounds good. Working hard at the ballpark early. So a happy birthday to Bobby. There's Bryce Harper. AT&T. Uverse rewind. This was at first scored E6. It's been changed to a double. Harper hammers one down the line. Fair, it bangs out of the corner. It may have knocked something loose while it was in there. Goodness, is he hot right now? Yeah, he has that special sound when the ball jumps off his bat. The kind of sound we hear with John Carlos Stanton. Second double tonight, a triple, and just crushes this ball. Harper's swing, and you see it there in Foxmo. Look how fast it came out of the corner. Harper's swing is not that elegant, sweet left handed swing. And you, as a left handed hitter, Tommy, can appreciate that. It's more of a violent hack. It's not a, an Adam LaRoche type left handed swing. Or Christian Yelich. Yeah. But man, is it powerful and effective. You hear, hear the term a guy has a violent delivery, is a pitcher, he has a violent swing. Desmond singled and scored in the third. Desmond had a rough defensive series against the Braves. And he's a guy that, when he first got to the big leagues as a young shortstop, I believe he had over 30 errors. And little by little, he's been able to uh, get better every year to the point where he was a gold glove finalist last year but he he works at every facet of his game 
Right now, he's just trying to move Harper to third. In the hole, Echeverria. Harper fell down and gets back to second, and Jones throws it into left field. Goodness. Harper being asked by his third base coach, Bob Henley, if he's okay. He is. Well, he puts the brakes on. He thought about going to third. And then he saw Echeverria with the pick. Another nice play by Etch. Really an ill advised throw because by that time he had gotten back to the bag and Garrett Jones air mails it into left field and Harper gets over to third. Now the infield, big, big, biggest thing there is the infield has to come in now with one out. And Slowey was able to keep that ball on the left side of the infield, keep the runner at second, but the error allows Harper to get to third. It's just the same as Desmond pushing him with a ground ball to the right side. Tyler Moore is up now. So is Archimedes Caminero. Moore opened his night with a home run to right. One, two. Bouncer up the middle into center field and a base hit. Well, that's how an error can just change the entire complexion of that situation. Because of the error, the infield's in. Makes it a much more uh, hitter friendly situation for Tyler Moore, and he just bounces one right back up the middle. Back to a four run cushion for the Nationals. And here is Espinosa. A couple times now the Marlins have come back. They scored that run in the bottom of the second. Top of the third. Nats got it back. Jones picks it. Out there. Echeverria's relay not in time. Marlins scored a run bottom half of the sixth. And the Nats have answered back here in the seventh. Sande Leon. Leon now two for eighteen on this season. Three. Five runs, eight hits. Kevin Slowey so far has saved the uh, bullpen. And you hope that the Marlins put themselves in a position where that pays off tomorrow night and Wednesday night. Well, you know that Jose Fernandez, who's pitching Wednesday, has worked hard in between starts to get back on track. Well, the Marlins have dropped seven in a row. Fernandez, usually a guy that, especially last year's rookie season, was able to stop a lot of losing streaks. That ball's hit and hit well. Right field and deep and gone. And the Nationals crack it open. Two run shot, three runs across here in the seventh.
and an 8 2 lead. For the Nationals, Rich tonight have eight extra base hits. So it's not one of those nights where they've been pinging you to death with singles. Eight extra base hits. Gets his first home run of the season. And that, I believe, is his first major league home run. Leon, out of Venezuela, is just 25. He got to the big leagues in 2012 with the Nationals. Had 30 at bats, just one at bat last year. Yeah, you're right. First one of his career at the major league level. So a two run shot careful there. Gentleman leaning over the. Railing. Trying to get that foul ball. Jordan Zimmerman at the plate and now comfortably on top, eight to two, as the Nationals have systematically dismantled the Marlins, knocking out Brad Hand. Now finally getting to Kevin Slowey. Slowey trying to get Zimmerman out. Has a base hit into left field. Jordan Zimmerman, that's his second base hit tonight. We talked about his athletic ability. Jordan Zimmerman in a high school school game. One game had 11 catches and over 300 yards. Because he wasn't defended by John Carlos Stanton. That would have been a good matchup. Stanton <laughs> was a uh, corner yeah. wide receiver himself in high school. Well, no, Mike Redman just trying to get through this inning with Kevin Slowey. He's due up when the Marlins bat in the bottom half. To center, Yelich started in, now goes back, and it's over his head, and it's going to the wall, and Rendon blasts one off the wall. Zimmerman will score. Rendon has a triple. The Nationals have three triples tonight. Five doubles. And two homers. With Yellen, she's been playing a lot of left field mostly. This is one of the most difficult balls, that one that's right over your head. Just a little flinch. He didn't come in a lot, but all it took was a little flinch. And that ball was stung by Rendon, who just continues to impress us. Yes, he does. And Mike Redman has to make the change. Slowey didn't get a whole lot of help behind him. 9 2.
seven hits. Jeff Baker comes into the ball game at, at third base. The pitcher is now in the five spot. It used to be Casey McGee. There's Archimedes Caminero. So Baker is in the uh, nine spot. Now that'll allow him to work a, an inning or two. So you, one thing that Mike Redmond hopes is that he can get that out of Caminero. He might try to get another pitcher some work in this one tonight. Caminero facing Franzen. Remember, it was Caminero made a couple appearances in D.C. One good, one not so much. The second one was the uh, Ian Desmond Grand Slam. Where the night before he did a nice job. Washington, many people uh, felt after the Atlanta Braves suffered a, a pair of devastating elbow injuries to starting pitchers. A lot of people put Washington in as the uh, favorites in the East. Some had them advancing all the way to the World Series. Obviously, there it would help them if uh, Matt Williams' team could figure out how to beat the Braves, but they. Uh, they play like this, they may not have to. They may have enough wins against everybody else along the way. Well, and, and probably in three or four weeks, they'll get uh, Doug Fister back in the rotation, which will probably give them one of the the better, if not the best, four man rotation of uh, anybody in the league. Had a nice talk with Randy Knorr, who's the bench coach there with uh, Matt Williams, who also interviewed for the managerial job. And he said when when Matt Williams got the job, he called him right away. He called Randy and he said, hey, I, I know you interviewed. You didn't get the job, but he said, I want you alongside with me on the bench. Well, there's there's continuity there because Knorr's in his third year. Steve McCaddy in the background there. Six years as the Nationals pitching coach. I mean, arrow with a fastball strikes out France. And the carnage continues here in Miami with the Nationals up 9 2.
Nationals, most of them for extra bases. Two runs on six hits for Miami. Seattle is in town. Interleague baseball. Been a while since the Mariners have been here. And another fireworks Friday. So stay in your seats after the game. Hey, the Mariner moves, Rich. There he is. All right. Incredible fireworks display. Go to Marlins.com for tickets. I was in the kingdom the night the Mariner Moose fractured his ankle. He used to do a, a great bit behind an ATV. Not on sure. Is that part of our 10 run reel? Roller blades. No. Steve Souza is in the ballgame. He's in, the cent in center field. It was, a, it was a frightening thing, Tommy, because you, <laughs> he was on roller blades like he was water skiing with a rope behind an ATV. And he went into the fence. The... the the disturbing. I mean, he went in hard. He did. Too. And the, the disturbing, the disturbing thing about it was, you could tell that his leg was damaged. But he still had that goofy smile on his face as he limped off the field. Thankfully, they were able to repair it, and uh, the young man was okay. He came back. He lost a step, but he came back. Toyota Trend, Nationals starters ERA, very different than you would expect, but as Tommy pointed out, Doug Fister's coming back, and Jordan Zimmerman had the flu his first start. That carryover affected his next start. This is more like they expect with Zimmerman. Well, the, the start against the Marlins, inning and two-thirds, seven hits and five runs. Hey, by the way, I was just thinking, it's amazing how baseball circles, how everything comes around. How are you going to tie this into the, no, I, the no, moose I'm, I'm trying to ankle. get away from the moose right now. <laughs> the uh, the fly ball that Reed Johnson hit to right field back in 2003, Reed Johnson and Jason Worth were teammates with the Blue Jays. Good work, Hut. Now, Ty Echeverria in there too. Well, he was a Blue Jay. He was too. a Blue Jay at one time. So we're we're bringing in Toronto. We're getting our thoughts away from the Moose. Let me text Buck Martinez just to let him know we're thinking of it. <laughs> yeah, we're thinking about it. <laughs> the Moose was it wasn't Joe Theismann like was it wasn't no, that bad. No, I mean it, it, no, but you could tell he was in great pain. But all you could see was the goofy smile. Lined into the seats off the bat of Jeff Baker. First at bat for Baker tonight. And it doesn't get much easier. Steven Strasburg on the mound for the Nationals tomorrow. Well, he had some of his best stuff of the year his last time out, which was against the Marlins. Strasburg in six and two thirds struck out 12. Had a tremendous changeup work. That line drive into the seats, the security here at uh, Marlins Park tending to a fan right now. You can see Joe West's, the uh, home plate umpire, Jordan Zimmerman on the mound. And we hope that the fan is all right. A veteran move by uh, Joe West. Well, he's human, and players are as well. When they see something like that, it's really hard to, to turn the page and just keep playing. Was it Greg Dobbs in about two, three years ago? Hit a ball where a fan was hurt, and then. That fan went to the hospital, and as I remember it, they turned out the fan was okay, and some of the Marlins went and visited the fan in the, in the hospital. Yeah, I, I believe it was a youngster. Not 100% sure if it was Dobbs, but it, it might have been. Here's the 2-1. On the ground, Espinosa fires to first in time. 
to get Baker. Jordan Zimmerman has been splendid tonight. Seven innings and a 9 2 lead. Trying to remember the left handed hitter involved in that uh, incident, probably, but I want to say five, six years ago. And uh, Craig, you chimed in. I think you've got that hitter. Yeah, I think it was Ramita, from what I recall. I thought it was in, I was going to say Philadelphia. I think you're right. You know, you're right. It, it, it we was had like the, the city first or second the batter of the game. I think it was you're early in the first game. Absolutely inning. right. It was right? Philadelphia. A, yes. a screaming liner right beyond the dugout, right almost in that same area, a little lower. He might have been first, second row. And I believe the youngster that was injured at first. I think they, in fact, I think Hermita wound up seeing the, the, the fan uh, the next, either the next game or the next time the Marlins were in. I think it was the next which, time the Marlins came back. Maybe a month or two. But, you know, it really, every time you see that, you say, boy, keep your eye on the game. If you're coming to the ball game, especially in the low seats, bring a glove. Or when you're watching, make sure you pay attention to the hitter because people are texting now. They're looking down more than ever, and things happen. So try to be alert when you're at the game. Here's Jason Worth. Had this conversation with Casey McGee, who played in Japan last year. And I saw this for the first time in Japan last year in, in March. In Japan, a lot of the ballparks have a screen, much like the home plate screen, go a little lower, that stretches from home plate all the way down the line. So the first 10, 12 rows of seats protected from a line drive. And we've seen a few ballparks do that. Uh, during batting practice early yes. before the game. And the Nats are one of those teams in Washington. Yep. Worth bat uh, battling Archimedes Caminero in the eighth in Miami. There was hope for the fish that getting off the road would be the tonic to end what has been a seven game slide. Training the right hander. Caminero misses outside. But to so far, the Nationals are piling it on nine to two. And that the Marlins in this uh, seven game losing streak we talked about it haven't had a lot of lopsided losses. Worth is struck out. Marlins Eye pregame show starts every telecast. Tomorrow night starts at 6 30. It's presented by your South Florida Honda dealers. Out there at center field. Jackie Robinson Day tomorrow. And Carl Pavano not only will be with us during the telecast, it's an email and Twitter Tuesday. Jackie Robinson Day. And Carl will make his uh, television debut as a third analyst. High pop up. Echeverria is there. And Steven Souza Jr. pops out. Not that we're putting any pressure at all on Carl. Just need him to snap an eight game losing streak. That's right. 
As promised earlier in the game, we've got that AT&T fan photo. Tweet to FL fan photo for a chance to be shown in a future broadcast. Brought to you by AT&T. There it is. Matt Morris with Christian Yelich. He looks a lot different than his days pitching for the Cardinals. Matt makes the show. Coming arrow throws a strike. Ian Desmond. I would think, Rich, we didn't touch on it too much with uh, Harper coming out of the game. I'm sure he's okay. He's had a big night. And he's not a pure center fielder. He's been playing left field, but with Span on the seven day concussion DL, Harper's probably going to be in center field. But Steven Sousa comes in more of a, a pure center fielder. So Harper is getting the uh, last few innings off. Souza's second at bat of the season. Sure, Ian Desmond has some folks over from the other coast. To see another Sarasota product in the big league soon, and that's Casey Kelly, who is coming back from arm surgery with the Padres, former Boston Red Sox first round pick. Breaking ball, Desmond's knees buckle, and Tommy Nero works a scoreless eight, 9 2 Nationals in control in Miami. Nationals early and often and even late and often 9 2 on 15 hits 10 extra base hits Christian Yelich about the only highlight for the fish and Garrett Jones did Homer Yelich extending his hit streak to nine straight games and Jordan Zimmerman's night is done Zimmerman is back to his old form as he goes seven innings and the Marlins muster just the two runs. Blake Trainin. Saturday against the Braves made his major league debut. This guy too called up because uh, a starter in the minor leagues he can. Fill that role of a guy who can give them more than one inning.
busy night for Jordan Zimmerman a, a good night. Seven innings gave up just the two runs and had a couple of hits. So good night all around. Crowd reacting. Prematurely to the uh, yellow single they knew it was coming. Actually a uh, kiss cam there was a, apparently an uncooperative couple on kiss cam. At the uh, beginning of the inning they were unable to. Get together. Negotiations took place and they went back to the couple and they kissed. And all is well all is well with that uh, Christian Yellich swing too. Extended his hitting streak to nine games in the fifth inning with a single. And that base hit up the middle is second hit tonight. So training will face Derek Dietrich Dietrich 0 for 3. Trans path to the big leagues is a really interesting one. He was born in Wichita Kansas. He studied at the University of Arkansas and at Baker University. He was on the JV team. At Baker he tried out at Arkansas well at least he tried to try out but Arkansas. Did not have a a walk on program. So he was forced to sit out a year and then he went to South Dakota State. Big baseball school well, the Jackrabbits. And he was a walk on there. He was originally drafted. By the Marlins in the 23rd round. Are you talking about a guy who's persevered? Oakland drafted him in the seventh round out of South Dakota State. Nationals got him in the uh, Mike Morse trade. Dietrich lines it down the left field line. And so the Marlins put together nice at bats with Yelich and Dietrich. Here comes Stanton now. Those swings right there and base hits like that are going to make. Derek Dietrich a really good hitter and keep him around the major leagues for a long time. We know he has the, the pop and he can turn on a ball. But when he stays that way and drives the balls to the opposite field that's a that's a great look at his swing too. Swings at a fastball, double, single, and a strikeout for Stanton. And training with strike two. Look at where they ended up on Fox tracks. Trainer is only the third pitcher out of South Dakota, actually third player out of South Dakota State to get to the big leagues. Pitch misses in. Veen Gregg arrived in uh, 1907. Caleb Thielbar, also a pitcher in the big leagues and now training. Breaking ball pulled foul. There's many schools in the north or even the northwest that dropped baseball because of the weather or in the era of a Title IX where sports were dropped. Schools like Wyoming. It kind of happened uh, a little more than you, you'd like to see. Oregon dropped it for a long time, just brought it back. a few years ago University of California Berkeley was going to drop baseball until some alumni stepped in and helped save the program 2 2 Stan swings and misses and strikes out. Look at that uh, train in the young right hander 
didn't have to really throw a pitch over the plate. One of them he threw over the plate. One of those at bats, Giancarlo kind of go back, look at again, say, you know, could have had a better at bat there. Now Garrett Jones pulled one into the seats for a home run his last time up. Greg Dobbs is on deck. Steve Ciszek warming in Miami's bullpen. The Marlins in the throes of a seven game losing streak have not been able to get their closer regular work. That pops out of the glove of Sandy Leon. Yelich advances. Dietrich had to wait and read to see if Yelich was running. I figured that down by seven in the eighth was probably not a good time to get thrown out of second. Yeah, you try to follow a couple of things. You try to follow the ball. You try to see the runner ahead of you where he goes. You're right. No, no chances when it's nine to two. Counts three and zero. Oh. And one would be nice to see Manny Machado back, the Miami kid trying to get back to the Baltimore Orioles. Started running some sprints. That's a, a slow recovery from the knee surgery. Ball in the dirt. Jones has walked. They're loaded. Here comes Dobbs. Braves got another nice uh, outing from Irvin Santana. Remember we told you the Braves and Phillies playing in Philadelphia. Atlanta has a 2-1 lead in the seventh inning. Santana went six innings and struck out 11. Steve McCaddy on his way out to the mound. Logan Morrison. In the news, removed from Monday's series opener against the Rangers with a tight right hamstring in the first inning. It'll be good to see uh, Lomo when he gets here. Morrison off to a slow start. Been DHing. Now he's actually started in right field. And as things uh, have it, Michael Saunders, who came in to Replace him is uh, two for three with an RBI. Dobbs ready. Dobbs up there saying got a young pitcher out there struggling with control. He's going to come at me with a first pitch fastball. He just didn't get it. Salta Lamaki is on deck. Bags filled with fish. Right on the black. Or two. And he got him. Dobb strikes out. Here comes Salt to Lamakia. Fastball had some pretty good movement.
like a changeup. At 94, I had good movement with that fastball, yeah. Because the word is the scouting report on training is slider and changeup, but that fastball is a good movement. Want to know to Salta Lavacchia has doubled, walked, and fly to center. Ball on the strike. Drew Storen in Washington's pen. Getting loose in case uh, Trandon can't finish this eighth, and who knows, it, it may be storing in the bottom of the ninth. Ciszek is ready. It looks like he'll come in to pitch the ninth against the Nationals. That Seattle game is five nothing. In the sixth, with the Mariners on the road on top of Texas. Salt of Lamakia, Moore, and Trayton gets to the bag to end the inning. Miami leaves a couple. All Nationals tonight. Got right now. They're up 9 2 right now. You can follow the Marlins or your favorite team with MLB.com at bat for your iPhone, iPad, Android, Blackberry 10, or Windows Phone 8. And there's a whole lot of other apps that there are devices that the app will work on. Get scores, stats, highlights, live audio, and more. Text app at 31826 or visit Marlins.com for details. Here is Steve C. Shack now. We have to keep track, uh, Rich. And certainly in, in games like this, we try to find different things to talk about. We have to find other players in the league who go old school with the stirrups and the baseball socks, as Ciszek does. He's old school. There's a few. We just have to, to note them. Sometimes it's a slumping player that will change his look to break out of it. Now I know uh, Jimmy Rollins and Tony Gwynn Jr. They they had the pant legs up high. It's another old school. So well he's an old school guy Reed Johnson. So pant legs up and stirrups that's that's certainly old school. And those are actual stirrups too because some some guys will get away with just the socks that have the stirrup stripes knitted into them. Yeah. 
Tyler Moore. Our, it our moms would have liked those better. Did your did your mom put? Uh, were you of the era where they put uh, elastic oh, in yeah. your stirrups? Yeah, so you, so you get them up higher. See, now, yeah. if we have Pavano on tomorrow night and ask him, he's going to look at us like we're from Mars because I, he, he may have been from the era where they just wore one sock. Of course, the Cincinnati Reds back in the 70s, when, when everybody was wearing the stirrups up high, they always had the low-cut stirrups. Driven to left, Reed Johnson. Low stirrups at all, plays it well off the uh, wall. And it's going to be a double for Tyler Moore. Well, what a night he's had. He needs a uh, triple for the cycle. Solo homer, RBI single, and now a double. Hey, it's the Geico quote of the game. Tommy's been waiting for this for almost nine innings, so let's unleash it. Gecko, a late arrival. I think everyone has to take ownership. You can't just look at one, it's all of us. Mike Redman on the O for road trip. Well, it's it's so true. You're you're in it as a team. And that's the way you have to accept things. Eleven extra base hits tonight for Washington. Zishek's uh, fastball. Comes in and Espinoza hits the deck. Zishek, of course, uh, carrying that that great saves streak into the season, hasn't had a lot of opportunities. To extend it, and and Rich in, in watching Cishek over the last couple of years, he's one who who really works better when he's out there a lot, and it's it's tough for him in these situations, not getting a lot of use, and then the last couple of times he's pitched, they haven't been in safe situations. Gets a strike, counts one and two. Sometimes he gets a little too strong and then that fastball stays up. A lot of pitchers like him will say they like to be used a lot because the fastball sinks a little bit better. at the plate. Cishek saved the streak. 31 consecutive. It dates back to June 8, 2013. It tells you how much of a struggle it was for Miami last year that he hadn't blown a save since June 8th, 2013, and his streak is at 31. And a nice breaking ball strikes out Espinosa. So think about the concentration for Steve Ciszek. Has been used a lot. It's not a save situation. He's out there trying to make some quality pitches and. He just made a beauty to get the first out. Anytime you see that replay, and that's a nice slow motion look. It's not Phantom Cam, which is the ultra, ultra slow look. But it reminds you that mound to plate is 60 feet 6 inches, but release point to plate is a lot closer than that. Because a guy like Ciszek, as tall as he is, stretches out, and by the time he delivers the baseball, he's got to be, what, eight, nine feet in front of the rubber? That's why Randy Johnson was so scary. <laughs> big guys, years ago, Houston had a big right-hander, J.R. Richard. J.R. was about 6'8".
Dietrich gathers, gets the out. Sandy Leon is out. Here's a look at that delivery. Watch where he lands and watch how far out in front when he releases it. And look how he tucks and hides the ball, too. And then comes across with that delivery. See how far his foot is off the rubber? Wow. And I'll bet you if you asked him, he might not realize that the foot is that far off. But in a in a game like this, nine to two, this is important for him, and and he's doing a terrific job in, in throwing good strikes, quality pitches, because he's got to stay sharp. And that would be strike three. Blake Trainin strikes out. The C check is sharp. Still 92 next. to by AT&T mobilizing your world and by your South Florida Honda dealers and SF Honda dealers dot com. Orange Park tonight. The uh, fish in some trouble. 9-2 Washington. Blake Trainin staying in. Matt Williams is hopeful that he can finish the ninth. Save the bullpen. Drew Storen was up and warming. But if he could get through a, a win against the Marlins without Clifford, Storen, and Soriano, that's a real boost to the Nationals. Yeah, it's a boost. It's a rarity, and it keeps them fresh. Traded misses a fastball up to Reed Johnson, Adani Echevarria, and Jeff Baker. Pretty good arm from training, throwing 94, 95 miles an hour. This guy that had to walk on to a couple of schools, or tried to walk on, and wasn't allowed to at Arkansas. And walked on at South Dakota State. Post game shows coming up, and it's presented by Checkers. The offering, aside from a, a peek at Jeff Conine's socks, Brad Hand struggles. Look at Niner, very nice, very businesslike. Tonight he's got the stripes. 
He's got the stripes. Very nice. It's a, a good look. Clean look. Purple tie. Business suit. Niner means business tonight. And Jabria takes inside. This has been all nationals tonight. Big nights at the plate. Bryce Harper. Two doubles, an RBI triple. Anthony Rendon, RBI triple, two run double. Tyler Moore, three hits, including a, a solo homer. Espinoza, RBI triple and a double. Sandy Leone had a two run homer and a single. Yeah, his first career home run. What a tough night for Echevarria. It two shots to second for out, so one hopper right back to the mound. We've seen him have games like this, Rich, and that's what's been impressive about Danny Echeverria this year, where he has just stayed with that game plan that he's worked on, hit the ball hard. A lot of times, because of his average, he's gotten hits, but he's had a few games where he's done that and come up empty, but he stayed right with it. Jeff Baker now. Baker takes a strike. Well, everybody with the Braves seems to be getting in on the act now. Remember, Evan Gaddis hit a homer in the sixth to give Atlanta a 2 1 lead over the Phillies. Gaddis, a solo homer in the eighth, followed by Dan Uglis, first of the season, followed by Andrelton Simmons, second of the year. It's 5 1 Atlanta. Breaking ball and a beauty. And this ball game is over. The Washington Nationals come in and stomp the Marlins. Nine to two is the final. And Miami's losing streak stretches to eight straight. That after a five and one start to open the season. The Marlins on the road trip lost a lot of ball games with late home runs, close ball games. This one, not close. This one not in question as the Nationals pound out 16 hits and win it 9 to 2.